Rabbi, can you unmute yourself? Good morning. Rabbi Green, could you please unmute yourself? We'll put your sound on or something. I guess not. Hey, Steve, you read lips? I'm pretty good at it now. Yeah, it's yeah, terrible. Uh, yeah. Well, I sent him a chat. That didn't do any good. Try to tell him that didn't do any good. Mm. Uh, let me call someone. Maybe. Who's there? Is Michael there? Rabbi Green, Rabbi Green, could you put on your microphone? I guess you can't hear me either.
Not working. No, try it again. Nope. No, I always give up as usual. I think so.
Perfect. And I can see the audio. Thank you. All right. Didn't realize we had a problem. Sorry. No okay. problem. All right. So we say, therefore, that was the case. Tiny pollution karma. But now we have a writer that teaches according to the earlier language writer. Erev Tisha B'Av, Lo Yochal Adam, Shnei Tav Shilin. This writer taught us that Erev of Tisha B'Av, we cannot eat two cooked foods in the same meal. Lo Yochal Basa. In addition, this writer says one doesn't eat meat. Velo Yishte Yayin. And one doesn't drink wine. Rabbi Shimon ben Gamliel Omer, Yishaneh. But Rabbi Shimon ben Gamliel says one has to uh, modify. modify their diet, change their diet in some way for the meal. Now, what's the reasonable question to ask? What do you mean, Rabbi Shimon ben Gamliel, when you say modify your diet? Does that mean you have to change the menu? Does that mean you have to change what you eat, etc.? Let's see. Right? Amar Rav Right? Ketzad Mishane. This is Rabbi Yehuda. How does one, according to Rabbi Shimon ben Gamliel, change one's uh, menu or meal at that occasion? Im hayaragil echol shnei tav shilim. If he was used to eating two cooked foods at the one meal, yochal min echad. He should only eat one variety of cooking, right? And if he was used to eating with 10 other people, so limit the number of people that you eat at the meal. By the way, I'm wondering, I have no proof. I'm wondering if this is where Rav Yasker got the view when, people, when he was asked the Shiloh, if somebody is an Avil, do they need to limit the number of people they're having at a meal or at, or if they're hosting a meal? And that's this it comes up with Chalashudas of the week of Shiva. Right. Hayara Gilishtot Asara Kosot. Here's the one we got to be careful of, guys. All right. If you're used to drinking 10 cups, okay, and I don't mean uh, water. One should only drink five cups. Okay. What are we talking about? From the sixth hour of the day and up. Okay. Right? So any one guy wants to drink, you know, 10 cups of schnapps, wine, whatever. Wine. Okay. Does, does that mean it was permissible to drink wine, Arab Tishabov? Okay. We, uh, we, our practice is not to during the, right, leading up to Tishabov. Unless, or meat, unless you have a uh, seal of some variety or a bris. That's only really, a, that's a mini cup. It's not really a thin. Right. Okay. Can you tell that at some of the Jewish summer camps? No, no, no. I mean, <laughs> you know. We're, we're all no hate like that. I mean, you mean Israel to thin. But right. That's but it's true. Because it's only and it's how you can make a seal. Zoom, I mean, right. I remember a camp we used to, used to make a seal every, every, every night. Every night. Because they didn't want to mess up the, the right? schedule. Okay. The range of seals. Right, right. Erev Tisha B'Av. Lo yochal adam shenei tavshilin. Okay, now we're back to what that Mishnah was. Tanya idach, another brighter. Erev tisha ba'av, lo yochal adam shenei tavshilin. Again, we say the eve of tisha ba'av, one does not eat two cooked items at the same meal. Lo yochal basar, would not eat meat. Lo yishte yayin, not drink wine. Divrei Rabbi Meir. Okay. But in this case, it's not just the das yachid. Okay. It's the chachamim. Okay. A little more weight to the subject. All right. That you change the diet. 
וממעט בבשר ויין, and one limits their meat and wine. כיצד ממעט? And how does one limit it? אם היה רגיל לאכול ליטרה בשר, if he was used to eating a liter of meat, יאכל חצי ליטרה. So he only eat half a liter of meat. Right? That's still a good size portion. Three eggs. Right? Yeah, it's still a, a good size portion of meat. היה רגיל לשתות לוג יין. If he used to drink a log of yayin, okay, again, that's a pretty good, uh, right? Four rabies, okay. that's like 16 that's, ounces. Right, okay. Yishte chatsi log yayin, should drink half a log of yayin. Ve'im no ragil, kol ikar asur. And if he's not used to drinking whatsoever, then it's forbidden for him to do so. Rabbi Shimon ben Gamliel Omer, im haya ragil le'echol tsnon, if he was used to eating a radish or uh, something else that was salty after the meal. I don't know why someone would choose that for dessert, but nevertheless, harishut biyado. Okay, he's permitted. So since he doesn't end the meal on a, with something positive, that's something. Tanya Ida, we have another bright. Okay, in this case, okay, any meal, that's the point now, okay, that in, is in relationship to Tisha Ba'av, okay? Which means other meals are not... Yeah, you will that's the only meal we're eating because of Tisha B'Av is the Tudor You're right, but the source I saw did not limit it to that, okay? It even implied, let's say the example that we had before, if you could have had the 11 o'clock and the three o'clock, or 11 o'clock and the five o'clock, okay? Yes, your Sudam of Seket was the five o'clock, but the 11 o'clock meal, is still, you know, to be adjusted because of the coming fast, right? It is forbidden to eat meat, and forbidden to drink wine, and prohibited to wash. But you see, but this is at the normal procedure was take off your shoes sit on the floor so you start your morning even though it's not yet dish above and all of the incidents if, if you're an owning you can't eat meat or drink wine so at the suda right, yeah. they pick okay. that up we'll pick but that it up it doesn't apply to any other meal okay. even on that day we'll pick that up as we when we turn to the next uh um all right but at this point what do we see where it's not a meal. In other words, this means uh, uh, exactly. other meals during the year, for example. During that day. During that day. Or maybe even during that day. But again, that wasn't the source that I saw. Okay. It limited it to only other meals during the year. Okay. Mutar okay. It's permitted to eat meat, to drink wine, and permitted and forbidden to wash. When you said Mishum Tisha B'Av, does that mean you look as you're getting ready? But no, but we look at Rashi. You're filling yourself up. Rashi is very clear. It's talking about the Sudam yeah. of second. I understand that. I'm not disagreeing with it. Okay. I'm just saying another source implied it more. Okay. Rabbi Yishmoel, the Rabbi Yossi Omer, Mishum Aviv in the name of his father. Okay. Any time, he says, that you're permitted to eat meat, and permitted to wash, the rabbi's taught, then you're permitted to wash. By the way, interestingly enough, in that statement by Rabbi Yishmael, by Rabbi Yossi, notice he doesn't include the drinking of wine. Just wanted to point that. Okay, Tanu Rabbanan, 
but another bright. Kol mitzvot hanahagot ba'avel, nahagot batisha ba'av. So here now we get to a different parallel. Okay, we're saying that on tisha ba'av we act as if we're all in avelus. Okay, what does that clarify? Okay, it reminds me of uh, of. Um, something that one but he cited in the name of Rav Soloveitchik, that if you think of Shiva Sarbatamas leading up all the way up to Tisha B'Av, it's a, a flip of how we think of Avelis as more severe of the Shiva than Shloshim, than if it's a year. Okay, all right. Anyway, Asur Ba'achila Ubishtiyah. Okay, whereas in that situation, right? Okay, we said, forbidden to eating, and drinking, and anointing, and wearing leather shoes, okay, and relations, and prohibited to read, okay, uh, from Torah, prophets, and writings. V'lishanot v'mishnah u'b'talmud u'b'midrash u'b'hilchot u'b'halachot u'b'agadot. And also to learn Mishnah, Talmud, Midrash, Halacha, or Midrash, Agad. Right? Aval, but korehu b'makom she'ino ragil l'krot. But according to this text, he is permitted to read in those things that he does not normally read, which we're going to clarify momentarily, right? And to learn in those sections that he doesn't ordinarily learn, okay? But he is permitted to read Lamentations, the Eob in the book of Job, and those negative sections in the book of Jeremiah, right? And the students in the schools are uh, get a day off, so to speak, as it's written, the enactments, I'm going to say, of Hashem are straightforward. They are, uh, give us integrity. Hold one second. And they in, make us happy. Right? Learning Torah is a joyful thing. Yeah, but the Gra yeah. adds the words, uh, changes this, and says that the children do not interrupt their learning because otherwise the next price will be exactly word for word the same. Right. And it wouldn't be brought unless there was some, some difference. Right. So the group puts that they do not do Vatil, and then the Bryce is said, you know, in this yeah. memory and the next memory they are in the Vatil. Okay, so going on, Rabbi Yehuda Omer, Af eno kore b'makom sheno ragil akrot. According to Rabbi Yehuda, they do not read even in those sections that they're not used to reading. And they don't learn even in those places that they're not used to learning. But rather reading than Job in Lamentations and those things, the negative things in the book of Jeremiah. And in this text, Rabbi Yehuda is saying that the students do skip school that day, or they don't have school that day. Why? Okay, going on now. What happens? A new piece. You don't eat meat and don't drink wine. Tana says a bright. Avel ochel, aval. aval, I'm sorry, aval ochel hu basar maliach. But a mourner, 
I'm no, not, but I'm sorry. And eat salami. Okay, okay. Let me just make a note. Aval. Yeah. Aval, okay. But, says this writer, he may eat salty meat, I guess that would be like salami, and drink wine from the uh, gut, from the, well, unfermented, unfermented. Basar maliach ad kama, how much uh, salty meat? Ama rav chinana bar kahana mishmei deshmoy lanem shmoy, kol zman she'eno kishlamim. So long as it is not like fully cured. In other words, uh, and as within a certain time period of having been prepared, okay, which is two days and one night, right? Vyayan salami. What? Like salami, right? Vyayan you can have it. Ad kama and wine from with its dregs, so to speak, from the uh, pre yeah. wine press. Kozman shahu toseis. So long as it's not past the first stage of fermentation. Tana, another bright. Yayan toseis ein bo mishum gilui. We say here that this unfermented wine, okay, is not uh, subject to being like exposed liquids. The kamat sisato, and what is, how long is it? Shlosha yamin, it is three days. Amar Rav Yehuda, says Rav Yehuda, Amar Rav, kachaya min hago, sho Rabbi Yehuda bar Rabbi Eli. This was the custom of Rabbi Yehuda bar Rabbi Eli. Erev Tisha B'Av, mevi'in lo pat chareva b'melech. Eve of Tisha B'Av, he would bring a, a, a piece of stale bread with salt on it. And what would he do then? Vyoshev bein tanur lekirayim, and he would sit between the oven and the stove. Vochel v'shote aleha kiton shalmayim, and he would drink along with it, eat eat it, and drink along with it a large jug, let's say, of water. V'dome kamisha meito mutal lefanav, and he it would appear. And his behavior would be such that it was as if his deceased was in front of him. In other words, he did not look at Tisha B'Av as an ancient or past event, but the same way one would have their mourner present, okay? Uh, the, so, so he acted likewise that the destruction of the temple was that impinged on him so personally. New piece from our text. Tznan Hatim. It was taught there elsewhere, really, in another mission. Makom Shinahagula Asod Malacha Batisha Ba'av. Osin, a place where the custom was to carry out work on Tisha B'av, we do. Makom Shinahagu Shalola Asod, a place where they did not, where they had the custom not to work. Ainosin, we don't work. Ubechomakom, and in all places, Tamidei Chachamim Betelim, the sages refrain from their activities. The students, the people who learn. Tamidei Chachamim, right? Okay, Rabbi Shimon ben Gamliel Omer, he says, Leolam Yase Kol Adam Atzmo Ketamid Chacham. Okay, but that. According to Rabbi Shimon ben Gamil, all people should behave in the manner of the students and sages. Okay, they should not work. Now, we might have a question here and say, well, isn't that a bit of uh, arrogance? Yeah. All right. He's saying you're being machmir. Well, saying. we'll see. Let's see what the Gemara tells us. Tanya Nami Hai. And we have a right that teaches also. Rabbi Shimon ben Gamliel Omer, Laolam Yase Adam Atzmo Ketamid Chacham, Kedei Sheyit Ane. Okay, that a person should behave themselves like students and the sages so they feel the hardship of the fast. 
Tanya Ida. And we have another bright that says, Rabin Shimon ben Gamliel Omer. Also, he says, Kol ha'ochel ba'av, one who eats and drinks on the ninth of Av, ke'ilu ochel v'shoteh b'yom ha'kippurim. It's as if he eats and drinks on Yom Kippur. Rabbi Akiva Omer, he says, kol ha'osem l'acha b'tisha ba'av, whoever does work on Tisha ba'av, e'no ro'eh siman bracha la'olam. He does not see any benefit ever to what he did. Chachamim Omrim and the sages say, Kol ha'osem l'acha b'tisha ba'av, whoever does work on Tisha ba'av, e'no ra'es siman bracha la'olam. Also does not see any benefit ever in the world. V'chachamim omrim, and further the sages say, kol ha'osem l'acha, right? B'tisha ba'av, whoever does work in Tisha ba'av, ve'eno metabel al Yerushalayim, and doesn't uh, mourn for Jerusalem, e'no ro'eh b'simchata, does not see its joy. Shneamar, as signed in, in Yeshaya, Simchu et Yerushalayim v'gilu ba kol ohaveha, sisu ita masos kol hamitablim aleha. Okay, that basically one rejoices on Jerusalem and those who mourn for it will ultimately also at some point in the future rejoice at its rebuilding. The Mephoshim brings that, that you mamish, if you do not mourn on Tisha B'Av, you mamish you will You will not participate in the assassination. You'll see as you go that way. So it's a very serious thing. Mikan Amru, Kol Hamit Abel Al Yerushalayim Zoche V'ra'eh B'Simchata Whoever mourns on Jerusalem for that day, okay, will merit and see its rejoicing. V'she'ino mitabel ha'yushalayim, and if one doesn't, e'no ro'eh b'simchata, he does not see yeah, its rejoicing. Tanya nami hachi, and we have a brighter that teaches as well, kol ha'ochel basar v'shoteyayin b'tisha abba'ab, Whoever eats meat and drinks wine on Tisha B'Av. Okay, I love Hakatu Vomer about that person says in Micheskel, Utehi Avonotam Al Atzmotam. Okay, that his uh, bones will be, his sins will result in the bones. Right. Okay. Rabbi Yehuda now says as follows. According to Rabbi Yehuda, as part of Tisha B'Av, one had to turn over the bed. Okay? But the sages did not agree with him. They did not acknowledge that. Tanya, in a tat in a brighter. Amrulo, the Rabbi Yehuda. They said to Rabbi Yehuda, the davrecha ubarot manikot matehelehem. Regarding pregnant and nursing women, what's going to happen to them? Amar lehem, he responded, Af ani lo amarti ele biacho. I only said to those that were actually able. Tanya nami hachi. And we have a brighter that teaches as well the following. Mode Rabbi Yehuda lechachamim, b'she'en no yachol. That Rabbi Yehuda acknowledged the view of the sages when those were not able to. Umodim chachamim la Rabbi Yehuda biyachol. But the sages acknowledged Rabbi Yehuda's view when one is able to do so. My benayhu, so what's the difference between them? Ika benayhu, sha'ar mitot. Okay, regarding all the other beds in the household. Okay, as taught elsewhere in a brighter. Keshe amru, when they said to turn the bed over, lo mitato bilvat, not simply his own bed, hu kofed, that's what he turns over, ele kol hamitot kulan hu kofed, but rather all the beds 
in the household. Amar Rava. And the Rava now says, Hilchata Ketana Didan. The law is like our time. Okay, like the Mishnah. Velo hodulo chachamim ho ika. And the sages did not acknowledge the view of Rabbi Yehuda whatsoever. Okay. Now, as we continue, um, I want to see one second. Why don't we stop here? Why? No, 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 no. I want to go on a little bit further. Okay, right there. Okay. All right, so let's go. Let's see what happens. Amar Rabbi Shimon ben Gamliel, There were no better days than uh, we said. What happens? What days? Chamisha asar ba'av, tu ba'av, and Yom Kippur. Bishlema Yom Kippur, we shum de eat base licha o mechila. Why? Because in Yom Kippur we say one is able to attain through, right, atonement, slicha o mechila. Okay, forgiveness and Hashem's compassion. Yom shinit nu bo luchot ha. Right? Right? Yom shinit nu bo luchot ha the day in which we say that the second set of tablets were given. Right? Ela, Tedvav Ba'av, right? Tu Ba'av, the 15th of Mayhi. What's that? Amar Rav Yehuda Mar Shmuel, Yom Shehutru Shvatim Lavo Ze Baze. It's the day in which the tribes were able to begin to marry one to another. Now, one second, in, in uh, Marseille, Parshas Marseille, we have the following. Reitzad Moshe b'nei Yisrael al pi Hashem leimor. Kein mateh b'nei Yosef dobrim. Right? Zeh davar ashet tzva Hashem levnot tzva afchad. Leimor latov b'inehem tiyena l'nashim. Ach l'mishpachet mateh avihem tiyena l'nashim. Okay? Citing that Moses said correctly, does a tribe said this is the word Hashem to the daughters of Tzlafchad, let them wa be wives to whomever is good in their eyes, but only to the family of their father's tribe should they become wives. So according to that pasuk, they were only able to marry, it would appear, to those in their own tribe. Okay, so therefore the Gemara is telling us in this case that they were permitted then to marry outside their own tribe after that. No, male. Except that was limited to that generation. Correct. That's that, the point. That on Tuba, Moshe and his descendants said, only this door that directly Right, we'll get to that. Receives. Right, my drush, what's the drasha? Zehadavah shetziva Hashem libnot slavchad. This is what Hashem commanded to the daughters of Tzlafchan. The varzeh lo yehei noheg ela bedor hazeh. But that was only implied for that particular generation. Okay? Now. But then they messed up the land. Went to different tribes. How do you deal with that? Apparently that no, after. They, then the next generation, that was different. Right. Yeah. Right. In future generations, a woman marrying outside her tribe won't affect the tribe having its. It's lot. percent. But here, if the Benoslavad who took in Yemen land, 
married a Zebulun guy, then the Zebulun tribe would inherit because his sons would get it. Yeah, right? that's so she had to stay in the she tribe that for them to so get. that that door the divi could be clear. Okay, let's go on a little bit more. Ma Rav Yosef, Ma Rav Nachman, Yom Shehutar Shevet Binyamin. Okay, and this is an alternative why Tuba'av is important. Okay. All right, in any case, all right? So one example was marrying within the tribes. Okay, this is an, another example, all right? So the Ashat right? Amar Rav Yosef, he says, Rav, Amar Rav Nachman, and then Rav Nachman, Yom Shehutar Shevet Binyamin, Lavo Bikahal, the day that the tribe of Benjamin was permitted to uh, have their the women okay, marry in with other tribes. Why? Because it's written, and uh, I don't see a Tanakh here, but uh, it's in uh, Shoftim, okay, chapter 21, starting with verse 1. Okay? Ve'ish Yisrael, Mishbab, Mitzpah, Lemor, Ish Mimenu, Lo Yitain, Bito, Levinyamin, Le'isha. Okay? Is that they took an oath that they would not marry uh, women from the tribe of Benjamin. They would not allow their yeah, daughters to marry them. men from the tribe. My drush, so what was the drash? Amar rav mi menu velo mi benenu. We say that it applies only, to, again, to the generation who took the oath and not to our project. Okay. Finally, Amar rabba says rabba as follows. Bar Barchana Ma Rabbi Yochanan, Yom Shekulobo Mete Midbar. That was the day that uh, it completed those who died in the, the wilderness after the Exodus. The Amar Mar, Ad Shalom Kalu Mete Midbar, Lo Hayad Davor Im Moshe. That until they all died, Moshe did not have any communication with Hashem. Okay. And that's where we're going to stop right there. Okay, we're going to pick up uh, tomorrow with Ula, okay, who's going to give another uh, example. And then we'll do part of Lamed Aleph and we'll finish a little bit of Lamed Aleph tomorrow at the sea. And then we should also bring Megillahs and start Megillah tomorrow. Okay. Bring to the Lord. Yeah, because otherwise we're starting on the time. We should bring- No, we were gonna, we'll start it at the sea of Megillah. Yeah. You okay, so we're only gonna have five minutes tomorrow. Okay. I don't know if it's only five minutes. Well, we'll there'll be, there'll be a sheet for uh -huh. okay. Unless you want to bring your own. I think we should start Megillah tomorrow. I mean, because we're literally gonna be five minutes. You're gonna do you're gonna finish with date, huh? And then and it'll be that's why I wanted to, I was suggesting stop in the middle here. No, I understand that, but some people who aren't part yeah, of the regular staff will be coming to the sale. So, but all right, fine. So we can. Uh, we don't really change our class to accommodate them. They want to be celebrate with us. How many people we spend to a lot of people? I, There's usually 30 people. Okay. Believe it or not, it's about 30 yeah. uh, Ruvain, we'll take Mrs. Green off the yeah. list. Okay. She doesn't want free food. She has a commitment. She has a meet. No. No, she has a meeting oh. of one of her committees. Oh, yeah.